مری مه سالی نه و حامری مه بیست و پنج. و ازش کنده کوچوما شرایطی. و داعش و ساعت ما و دیما نخواش کر. نه ما هم امت فلتی. نه علامت قطان. مربی بنا عدالتی. In August 2014, um, the uh, so-called Islamic State or Daesh attacked uh, the Sinjar region in Iraq and uh, they attacked especially the Yazidi and Christian minorities living there. When Daesh entered the villages and cities, they immediately um, began to uh, separate people by their religion. And they had a plan to kill all the men uh, and the women and uh, children, they were taken as slaves. I was born in the city of the city of Mazinda and born in the city of Mazinda. My name is Ivana. I was born in 20 years old. I was born in the city of Mazinda. 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 از درم پیله یه سوار کنم که من دختار که تحسامی ایباری نو بیام وقتی صاحب که او وقتی صاحب جمع هاتا کنم تبایی وان حوازی برخوا کنم چتا که عادی و There is a possibility in the German law for a state to start a humanitarian admission program and that's what we did we decided to take in up to 1,000 women and children that suffered traumatizing violence from Daesh. But many of the women, they wanted to have justice. They demanded to give testimony about what has happened. I met Rabia in 2014. I immediately recognized that it was very helpful that she was a woman because uh, many of the traumatized women would not be ready to talk to men about what has happened. The most important for a healthy few survivors is that they feel comfortable. Not only the support to speak the language, but to understand the cultural aspect. How should we approach survivors? How should we respect them? What should we take into consideration? <laughs> فرقی نه و مرد چورو که خوش تکاسیر آن گوته وسا، پس یعنی از بوی مرد تعبم شحقی مرد کاری نه نزیدت. وقتی م رابیعات دیتی از حسیم اینو هنگ اندیانی دهینه ما به حسیم. Helps also to be a police woman because we have the investigation experience and to know how to investigate, how to ask the right questions, which questions you should not ask, which direction you want to go while you hear the story and what you want to collect. What we received as a proof of evidence, we collect it and we keep it till one day a tribunal will be established. I worked in San Francisco uh, Police Department and District Attorney's Office as an investigator for 11 years and then started doing work on the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia and did that for many years. At the time that I came on to the Commission of Inquiry for Syria, you know, one of our first challenges is to find victims. The survivor of, a, of sexual violence in conflict may have not told anyone just out of fear of whether it's reprisal, of embarrassment, of a stigma. It's sort of an investigation within an investigation where you have to know the community and the culture. 
So maybe it's not being reported, but maybe you're learning that men and women have been separated in particular areas, or a spike in miscarriages, a spike in attempted suicides. All of these may be indicators. I went to Zatari camp and immediately went to speak to the different clinics and hospitals that were set up there and I met Dr. Hala. Dr. Hala was a great resource in learning about sexual violence, what others had experienced, what she was seeing. I'm Hala, a Syrian doctor. When I started uh, work in Zatari camp in a clinic, because I was the only female doctor at that clinic at that time, I received a lot of cases that was suffering from sexual violations. What was incredibly important about meeting Dr. Hala was the medical evidence. That's the type of evidence that I know later holds up in court. There is a lot of consequences for sexual violence physical symptoms and signs like fractures, transmitted diseases, also trauma for several parts of the body. But the most important consequences is the psychological one because it lasted for a long time and maybe lead to suicide. So we have to do something as professionals, as a doctor, to document these cases because it's not enough just to provide services for the victim. Also, you have to give them maybe hope that they can punish the perpetrator one day to bring the justice to the lives and that will keep the peace in the community. You are doing great work. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I am so happy that you're here. Aww. I am Berivan and I'm 27 years old. I grew up in Syria. I studied English and linguistics. Also playing and studying music. In 2010, when the like, revolution started in Damascus, most of us we were thinking that even though we know that we might not win, but at least we just, we, we are trying, you know? It was at night when they, they came. I just saw men, like really like tall men with, with weapons and you know, like they have masks. Then they took me. First day, they were really aggressive. Why you are not virgin? You are such a whore, like you don't marry and you, you know, like for me it was really a shame, you know, really harm. Like why you are asking me this? And there was like um, Imam who was like trying to orient me to the Islam and how to be a good woman. At that time, I was really, really scared that they will marry me to a sheikh or like to a leader, and then this is, will be the end. My first impression about Berival is she was a very strong activist in Syria, but that she lost all the hope due to the war. At that time, actually, I lost my belief and my trust of international uh, organizations. When I met Rabia, I said, oh, okay, she will be like, the same person. They just like want to do a report and then go, you know? But no, for me, it was like a little bit different. She was really like sensitive, really respectful. And I remember her face when she was like talking with me and um, she really have like this face of really she's with me you know like and it's important somehow like to feel like some support you know to get some support so one day in the future I think we all hope that some sort of court will be set up 
You will have all these years of the work that the Commission of Inquiry has done, all the interviews, all the information, the evidence that it has gathered to be used in such a court. It's, it's very important that when we send um, experts to intervene, we are able to send people who have the expertise that will stand up to scrutiny. So we choose these experts very carefully because we have to protect the integrity of the evidence that they gather. And this is the evidence that we are able to use all the way from local to national to sometimes the international court because, you know, justice delayed is justice denied. Thank you.